hello to everybody. We've got a, a nice full house here today. And as you, it sounds like y'all are determined to finish well today. Amen? I am too. I am too. And I'm going to walk you through that because it's really important that you finish well. It's really important. You know, nobody finishes well just because they got lucky. You finish well because you're determined to finish well in all things. Paul said, I am determined that I will finish well. That's what Paul said. And then at the end of Paul's life, he said, I finished my, I did my race. I finished my course. I've run my race. I have, and I've done well. He's like, I did it. I was determined that I'd finish well. Guys, tell somebody next to you, tell them, say, you're going to finish well. Well, we practice that in little segments throughout our life. We practice that. And we say, hey, at certain times, man, I'm going to finish well. And this is the end of the year 2023. Today has the number that only happens once every 100 years. Today is 123123. One, two, three. That's today. It's 123123. It's like a waltz. 123123123, one, two, right? It's like, okay. So what in the world could that mean? Well, I'm going to unpack a little bit for that. But if you're like, okay, well, it doesn't mean anything, Pastor Troy. And you're always just finding a verse with numbers, and that's just stupid. I get a big stack of hate mail every week from knuckleheads. Yeah. And here's what I'm going to say to you. If you don't see it, it's okay. We're not mad at you for not seeing it. And if you can think of any other reasons for me to point people towards the Scripture and towards Jesus, that's okay. But I'm going to use this. Amen. Because it's fun. And that's really the thing. Most people do not recognize the prophetic. Most people in the body of King Jesus, they recognize the pathetic, but they don't recognize the prophetic. And then, and then and they also do not recognize anything that's fun. They're very suspicious of things that are fun. Have you ever noticed that religious people are like that? Well, Brother Brewer, you better try those spirits. Like, man, dude, listen, I'm going to have a good time is what I'm going to do. And I'm going to have fun. I am determined to be full of joy. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Well, like, well, your life must be really easy. Oh, it is. It is. Just like your life is easy. Hallelujah. Except for, except for, except for, we rescued over 400 people last year out of sexual slavery. And... We have 4,000 children under our care right this second, and every single one of them has a horror story that I know. And I am a part of their horror stories, and I determined that God Almighty can trust me with that. And so I'm going to be happy, I'm going to have fun, I'm going to be full of the Holy Ghost, and I ain't going to be sad. Amen? And I don't want to have to get high to be like that. Amen. I want to be, I want to be, I want to be zealot for the Lord. I want to be passionate for Jesus. Uh, I want to be full of the Holy Ghost. I want people to be able to see something really different, right? Something really different. So let me give you a cool scripture that I think we can apply to today. And it's Psalms 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3. Would you guys open up your Bibles to Psalms 123 verses 1, 2, and 3? This is good. He says, I will lift up my eyes to you whose throne is in the heaven. That's a really good verse, first of all. If you don't learn any other verses today, and I'm going to throw a bunch at you, just to be able to learn the language of, I will lift up my eyes to you whose throne is in heaven. That, that is prophetic, powerful language. And go, okay, here's the deal. When you, lift up your, when, you, when you lift up your eyes, it literally means to turn your inward heart to see God. To turn your soul, to take an inner stance. To say, okay, I'm going to line up on the outside so I can line up on the inside. And then it says, your throne is in heaven. That's a really big deal because, guys, moving into 2024, I'm going to be preaching a lot on the throne of King Jesus because the throne is connected to the number 24 so many different ways in the Word of God. Y'all know there's 24 elders that circle the throne, right? The word lamb is in the book of Revelation 24 times, and it's the lamb that sits on the throne. Amen. It's the lion that comes back for the nation of Israel, but it's the lamb that sits on the throne. Okay, we're going we're gonna to talk a lot about the difference between the lamb and the lion. Amen. And what does that have to do with King Jesus? We need to understand the dynamics of that, of that relationship. But he says, I will lift up my eyes to you to whom, whose throne is in heaven. Verse 2, and it says, and, as, and I will do this as the eyes of slaves 
look to the hand of their master. And I will do this as the eyes of a maid look to the hand of her mistress. So our eyes look to the Lord our God till he shows us mercy. That verse right there tells me this. I am looking to you, looking to your throne like you completely own me. I am looking to you and looking to your throne like I have no other authority over me. For you and I to become completely dependent upon King Jesus for his kingdom and his authority is so important in the day that you and I are living in. And then he says this, in doing so, the response that I'm going to get from him as I look to him like this in total dependency is he's going to show me his mercy. Now, I'm going to be preaching also a lot on mercy this year. And because of our lack of, of understanding of just the English language, we don't even know what mercy is. And what's real is, you're like, well, yeah, but God's merciful to everybody. Um, God is merciful to everybody in the sense of he offers mercy to everybody. But just like that slot canyon I was in, he put it in a room, but you got to be able to fit through the door. You have to qualify for it. And if you're too fat to get in the door, you're going to have to leave something behind to get in that door. Amen. Are y'all still here? I see, as soon as you start preaching like this, people start going, uh oh. I'm, I might need a safe room where I, I need a good, comfortable blanket so I can start feeling secure again. Let me tell you what the gospel of Jesus Christ is this. Jesus loves you because he loves you because he loves you because he loves you because he loves you. And you need to run to him. You need to run to him. And just because he loves you doesn't qualify you for salvation. It qualifies you for access to salvation because at the cross of King Jesus, all the hostility of the Father was removed so that you and I can run to him. So you can run to him. But if you sit there on your couch and think that you're entitled to salvation or you're entitled to mercy or you're entitled to favor or you're entitled to the goodness of God, you're going to end up eating worms. And you don't want to do that. You're not entitled to it. Jesus is entitled to it. And the only way you can get it from him is to actually have a loving relationship with him. Like, I tell you what, if you ain't going to love him, he ain't going to let you. I, I'll tell you, one of my favorite verses that everybody in the world has a problem with, and I just love it, is it, it's like, the Bible says that Pharaoh was going to obey the Lord and God hardened his heart and wouldn't let him. Like, and then he brought plagues on him. Yeah, because it's a privilege. It is a great privilege that you don't even qualify for if you're not going to love him. To obey his voice is a great privilege. And he's like, whoa, 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 what? You, you're going to do what? Oh, no, I ain't done with you yet. You hate me. No, no, no. Change your mind. Deep. Like, whoa. No, God, see, God is not blind mechanical fate. He's not a robot. He's not AI. He's a person. He's actually a person who is alive. God Almighty is a person. And he wants you to love him. And you can say, well, I just can't love you, God, because there's just too much hurt in this world. Man, King Jesus. The only reason he allows all the mess and the pain and the hurt that's in this world is to give you a chance to come to him. You want to you wanna blame somebody for all the mess that's going on in the world? It's you. It's you and me. If he's going to allow me to be a knucklehead and have a relationship with him, then that means he has to allow the fact that knuckleheads can exist. Amen. So the problem is us. The problem is not him. But there will be a day, a holy day, where Jesus himself will come back and say, I'm done. Whoever knows me knows me, and whoever don't, don't. Don't wait until that day, friend. Call out to King Jesus. Become dependent upon him. And then the last verse of the one, two, three, one, two, three, here's the third one. And he says, he says this, have mercy on us, O Lord, have mercy on us, for we have endured much contempt. Do you know what it means to endure much contempt? It means to be canceled. To endure much contempt means for somebody to think or for somebody to disregard you as worthless and to talk very bad about you. And even though you're the good guy, you're called the bad guy. In a day where you will be called the bad guy, 
in a day where there is always going to be a mob against you, you are going to have to learn to find the mercy of the Lord. And let me tell you, in a day where you have to have the mercy of the Lord, you have to know how to look at him and not to anybody else and to be completely dependent upon him. I really think that God's going to teach us this great lesson in the year 2024 and say, be dependent upon me or don't. If something as bad as, say, COVID happened this year where the whole world changes, I, I want to just ask you this. Are you going to be able to remember how you prospered during COVID in spite of the situation you was in? Are you going to be able to remember that and say, no, I don't think God's good because the world is changing. No of a certainty, friends, the world is changing. And you're going to have to know the rock of your salvation, which is the Lord Jesus Christ, and be stable in a day where everything around you is unstable. I, I, I'm more determined now more than ever, ever, ever just to preach Jesus, 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 Jesus. And I know it gets on people's nerves, but I kind of like that. I don't know if you like to get on people's nerves. But I, 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 you know, I talk really tough, but I'm, I'm a creative guy, which makes me a little bit sensitive. Yeah, everybody's like, we can't be, I didn't say I was feminine. See, everybody thinks if you're sensitive, then you got to act like a girl. Boys are not supposed to act like girls. I got news for you. No, I'm not feminine, but I am sensitive. I'm a sponge for what people feel. I sure am. I'm a musician. I'm an artist. I'm a writer. I'm all those things. You know, I, I wrote a song one time, you know, years ago. I, I used to be a, a pro songwriter for a label. And in a couple of year period, in a three year period, I wrote 3,000 songs for them. And that was my job, right? And then I would hear a song come on the radio or see a song on an album, and it would have one of my lines in it. And I go, oh, I wrote that line right there. Oh my gosh. And I mean, that was what I signed up for. And that's what they do. They go through your songs and go, this song stinks. But that one line right there, that's really good. Or that one riff or whatever. And they do that. And so, and it's okay. That was, it was a privilege to be able to do that. But I want to tell you, I had some really cool lines. I'm a sponge for everything you feel. I write it down and make it all seem real, right? And I had, I can remember that's, that's one of my lines from another song. And the reason being is because I had to learn at a very early age that if I'm going to be somebody that really loves people, I'm going to be sensitive to how people feel. That means I had to be more aware of the heart of Jesus than I am aware of the hurts and the pains of everybody around me. I'm not going to ignore the hurts and the pains of everybody around me. In fact, I want to be a catalyst. I'm going to be somebody that is going to step in. We're, we're, going to, we're actually going to find solutions. I'm going to be a solutionary. Amen. I'm going to figure it out, and I'm going to do this, but I'm not going to ignore how people are hurting. I'm also going to include every single person in, that I can in the solution. That's how you know you're a racist, by the way. Amen. Say, no, I know you're a racist because you're a white guy. No, the devil has lied to you. Amen. The devil's a liar. So it's like, let me tell you how you know if somebody is a racist or not. If they will include people of other races in the actual solution of something. Here's how you know if somebody is a sexist or not. Will they include the other gender into the solutions, the actual solution of, the, of whatever the problem is? Amen. See, man, you've been lied to. Jesus said of these last days, and friends, you have to live like these are the last days. This is what he said. Do not be deceived. Yeah. Amen. Do not be deceived. Like, Pastor Troy, you just mentioned you're white, and that's just scary to me. Well, I am. I'd be happy to be any single race in the world. I promise you, I would. But I can't help it. And here's what I want to say. Nobody should have to apologize for their race. <laughs> Nobody. Hallelujah. <laughs> These things seem um, evident to everybody, but they're not anymore. And so it's up to you and I to know the truth in the midst of a day where the truth is hated and rejected. We live in a Pontius Pilate generation where we ask Jesus, what is truth? And then we don't wait for the answer. We get up and walk out. Yeah, Ask, because Jesus is truth, and he asked Jesus, what is truth? And then he didn't wait for the answer. He left the room. 
No, I got powerful questions, but I don't want to hear the answer because it will require, it, it will require change on my part. But write it down that I asked a powerful question. That's Pontius Pilate. That's the enemy of Jesus. Don't be caught up in that hive mind, my friends. Come on. It's a good preaching here this morning. So... I'm determined to finish well. Jesus was determined to finish well. John chapter four, verse 34, Jesus said, Jesus said, my food or the thing that gives me substance or the thing that gives me power, the thing that gets me through the day is to do the will of him who sent me and to accomplish his work. I want to tell you, Jesus was, he was all about finishing things. As a matter of fact, you remember the very first words that I ever spoke to his mama? When he's 12 years old, the first recorded words of Jesus. So he's spoken many words before. The first recorded words of King Jesus were, Woman, didn't you know I'd be about my, I'd, I would be about my father's business? That translates in English as he's being really sassy, right? And I don't think that that's the case. Um, but it doesn't matter because uh, Mary jumped on it like white on rice and said, You will be subject to me. And the next verse said, And Jesus was subject to them. Mama got on to Jesus, like, oh, no, Pastor Troy, that's blasphemy. You must be a Catholic. Oh, really? I've preached this before, and people are like, you, you worship the Pope. I'm like, no. So anyway, um, I, I know for a fact that Jesus, as a 12-year-old little boy, was saying, you know, it's time for me to get this thing started. And Mary said, no, it's not. And he went, no, it's not. And then whenever Jesus started his miracle working power at Cana in Galilee, Mary said, it's time for you to get started. And he said, it ain't time for me to get started. She said, it's time for you to get started. He said, okay, it's time for me to get started. <laughs> Have you ever thought about that? That Mary had say so in the timing of Jesus's appearance? Like, and his miracle working power and how all that works. Like, wow, he just, he just said, mom will tell me. Dad tells me what to do, but mom will tell me when to do it. Does that, does that not sound familiar to anybody else in here? It's crazy to me. Well, the last words that Jesus said on the cross were, it is finished. He finished well, didn't he? Oh, I love Jesus. I love him. Well, December 31st, 21, 23 marks a new beginning, one that asks us or brings us to a place of transformation and progression. Anytime you see one, two, three in the Bible, what you see is this. If you want to progress, this is how you step forward. From the beginning to the finished place. That's what one, two, three. Today is one, two, three, one, two, three. And it's how we end and how we begin this next year. I think it's just so prophetic. I mean, I can, I can preach so many sermons out of it. I see so many different things in it. And I'm just like, wow. And again, if you don't get any of those layers of revelation, or if that's not how God talks to you, or if you're just like, no, that's just kind of weird for me, it's okay, man. There's plenty of other layers of revelation, I promise you. And I haven't cornered the market on anything. I'm just saying that, you know, I, like, I'm going to stand with Israel. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm gonna, there's certain tests I'm going to pass that I'm going to progress in. And by the way, God will bless those that bless Israel. He'll curse those who curse Israel. And I just want to point out, that's a Genesis 12, verse 3. That's a 1, 2, 3 scripture. And I, I know this madness because I like it, and it's fun to me. And it's one of the ways that I can remember the word. I don't know about you, but I have trouble remembering things. And the older I get, it seems like I have a little bit more trouble. Because Leanna's always telling me, I told you that when No, you did not tell me that. Hey, husbands. How many of y'all think that your wives are delusional a big part of the day? And let me tell you what it actually is. She really thinks you're delusional, and she knows that if she tells you, she told you that, and if you go, I don't know if you did or not, you're going to wonder for the rest of the day and probably go, she probably told me that. <laughs> and she actually doesn't remember if she told you that or not. It just matters right now, so just get with the program. <laughs> That's how that works. This ain't like, no, that's terrible, Pastor. No, it's funny. You're supposed to think it's funny. I just don't think anything's funny anymore. You just think everything's funny. You just think funny. You just think everything's funny. You just think everything's funny. Gosh, man, uptight people, man. 
Well, if you add one, two, three, and one, two, three, you get the number 12, and that's perfect government. And this is a great day for us to say, your kingdom come and your will be done, right? So 12 disciples, 12 tribes, 12, great, uh, 12 gates of the New Jerusalem, 12 hours of the day, 12 hours at night, 12 precious stones in the foundation of the New Jerusalem, 12 months in a year. Uh, the tree of life has 12 different kinds of fruit. There's uh, high priest has 12 stones on his breastplate, 12 minor prophets. Solomon's throne had 12 lions before that, before his throne. It means the government of God. And this is a great day in the midst of such great instability of governments throughout the world, including our own, for us to go, you know what? Your kingdom come. I'm a kingdom guy. I'm a throne of King Jesus guy. That's me, man. And your kingdom come and your will be done. So this last year, there's a bunch of things that stand out. And I want to remind you, I said this at the New Beginnings Conference last year. And I want to just... I want, I want to quote me, if I can. <laughs> and I said this, a post-COVID outpouring of God cannot fit into a pre-COVID wineskin. Amen? And I said that, and I, I wrote that. You guys, you guys put that up there on the screen for me. I want them to be able to get a, a shot of that. A post-COVID outpouring of God cannot fit into a pre-COVID wineskin. That's good language. And I've been saying that throughout the year, just going, expect the Lord to change some things and know this, you're going to have to, you're, you're going to have to be willing to change in the years to come because everything is changing. Everything is changing so fast, so quickly. Like, well, I just think that if I have enough anxiety, everything will stop changing. No, it won't. That's not a good plan at all. So it's like, no, in spite, like, man, Pastor Troy, whatever you do, can we just not talk about the borders? Oh, okay. You don't got to go to the borders. The borders are coming to you. And you're going to have to deal with it. Your schools are going to have to deal with it. And your law enforcement is going to have to deal with it. And your hospitals are going to have to deal with it. Your streets are going to have to deal with it. Uh, you, we're all going to have to deal with it because it's been given to us. Will you be people of God in the midst of something that has changed? Because I'm saying yes, I will. I could throw a fit all day long. There's plenty of people on Twitter to do that. Amen. There is. And I want to just tell you, I hate the mindset of Twitter. Man, I, I, just, I just want to throw up. When I go through, when I go through my uh, Twitter feed, it's, it's like my imagination all day long. I don't know about you, but I'm like, nope, 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 okay. No, 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 no. Oh my God, why am I thinking that? Okay, I'm good, I'm good. Oh, that's, that's actually, all. nope, 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 nope. I just got to scroll through my head all day long. Y'all don't do that? <laughs> I'm telling you right now, I do. I do. Man, Leanna's always telling me, if somebody cuts me off in traffic, Leanna will say, are you going to bless them? or curse them. I'm like, I'm going to ram them and then I'm going to pray for them. <laughs> I got a big old pig getter on the front of my pickup truck. Like, man, I'm fixing, I call you speed bump in the mighty name of King Jesus. <laughs> Leanna's like, no, you cannot live like that. Like, you're right. I can't. And then, what, then what's really funny is you get close enough and you stare them down. Like, okay, well, I'm going to pass them. Oh, they go to our church. God bless you. I'm so happy to see y'all. <laughs> Why didn't they have a sticker on their vehicle? <laughs> we got cool open door stickers you're supposed to put on the back of your window so that I don't ram you if you cut me off. <laughs> <laughs> Obviously, I'm just teasing. Hallelujah. It's funny. That's something else, too, I've learned. I have to tell people I'm teasing now. Because people are like, oh my God. And it's like, people are just, okay, big part of that is people are so non-relational now and they know people in sound bites and they don't speak with other human beings. And so they, they, they think they do, they feel like they do because they watch enough TV. So they think they know people and they think that, but it's gone, it's gone out the window. I was talking to like a really cool sound guy that's in the booth up there. He has a job now that is half of the job that every sound guy before him ever had, and it's this, stage monitors. So all of us, up until this generation, um, 
the, the stage had to sound perfect. So the guy that ran the board was perfect at the sound that was up here and also to the sound that was out there. And that's a really hard job. Now his job is to be with these finish because now everybody's got something in their ear and everybody decides what they want to hear now. You know what it means? It means that no musicians learn how to play by playing with other musicians. Everybody learns by themselves. And so you get ready to throw a lead, like you can't just look over at another musician these days and go, you feel it, you feel it, you feel it, let's go, let's go, let's go, boom, and throw it. No, 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 that's not how it works because everybody's looking at their shoes because that's how they learn to play and it's very internal. So they feel like they know how to play with other musicians, but they don't know how to play with other musicians. Right? They know how to play with a bunch of tracks. Just exactly like that, people today do not know how to relate to other people. They relate to tracks of other people that they scroll through. And I can just see it just as plain as day. And so I have determined in my own walk with King Jesus that I wanna be bold, that I wanna be humble, right? I wanna be very concerning for people, but I don't wanna be afraid of everybody's opinion. Right? I want to be respectful, but I don't want people to run over me. I want to be very giving, but I don't want people to steal from me. And people are so used to one side of the narrative, they, it just sounds like noise to them if you say both of those things. This is why we have to know the words of King Jesus. This is why we have to know the Word of God. We cannot get away from knowing the Word of God. I have so many great miracles that happened this year that I'm so, some of my favorite miracles that's ever happened happened this year. Also too, we suffered some great losses in the body of King Jesus. I was mentioning um, Pastor Gloria's husband dying. And we suffered, even in our own church, we suffered some great losses this year. And many of us are mourning during this holiday season right now of going through a series of firsts without somebody. If you love long enough, you do that. Amen. Does everybody in here know that? Okay, you need to know that the Lord has not abandoned you during that time. And, and don't, you know what, that, that, that great feeling that you have when you have lost somebody is so real, and nobody knows what it's like to be you to go through that. And I'm not belittling that. I promise you, I am not. You know, when you mourn from somebody, it's a next level uh, internal experience of separation anxiety. I mean, that's, that's what it is. So Leanna's got this silly little dog named Louis. And I named him Louis Vuitton because he's hoity-toity and costs a lot of money. <laughs> and, and worthless. <laughs> Louis Vuitton. And so, but I promise you, Leanna will leave the room and that dog starts losing its mind. Starts crying and freaking out. And I was sitting there and I was looking at it one day and I was just watching that. And I thought... That is, that is craziness. And instantly, the Lord spoke to me and said, you know what, Troy, that's how you mourn over the death of your dad. Yes. And I went, ah, uh, yeah. Sometimes I just wonder, am I gonna be able to remember his voice? Oh my God, am I gonna forget daddy's voice? Am I gonna, you know, you start going through this thing and on the inside you just start going, yup, 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 yup. That is a part of the human experience. And it does not mean that the Lord has left you. I wonder if everybody in this room is gonna get through those days, like all the Gillespie family is going through right now, where they say, it hurts, it's not any fun, but I promise you, God is with me. See, you can't fake that. You, you either apply this to your life and you either know King Jesus or you don't. And I would tell you, know Jesus. Know him. You know, Jack Hayford died this year, one of my all-time favorite great men of God. And he died on January the 8th and he was 88 years old. And I went, wow, those are Jesus numbers, 888. That's pretty daggum cool testimony. I like that. Pat Robertson died this year at the age of 93. I was, 
I don't want to say I was buddies with Pat Robertson, but I've, I've known Pat Robertson since, uh, since the 80s. And I was on the 700 Club twice last year. And I've got to meet him many times. And had, I've been privileged to eat with him and have meals with him. And he was so good to me. Uh, guys, you and I partner with the 700 Club through our food bank. And we're the longest standing recipient agency that the 700 Club Operation Blessing has. You know, there was... There was a time in the late 80s where I, Leanna and I was actually, I was a phone counselor for the 700 Club. I prayed for people on the phone and I got to know a lot of people. And then there was a time where uh, I, I started feeding everybody and Operation Blessing was there and they started giving me food. And one day, Pat Robertson heard about everything that I was doing as far as feeding people goes. And he said, you know, Troy, Man, it's just remarkable. You know, I talked to you. It's remarkable what you're doing. I, I'm amazed. Oh, what else can I do for you? And I said, well, sir, I'll tell you what. I'll put together a, city ride, a, a citywide um, monster food outreach if you'll give me the food for it. And he said, how many truckloads of food do you need? And I want to tell you, I totally made up a number. <laughs> and I said, 28. 28 18-wheeler, 52-foot trailers loaded with food. And he said, okay, well, we're going to make that happen. It's done. And I thought, my God, what have I done? <laughs> so I called the brother, uh, oh, my gosh, I can't believe I can't think of his name, Calvary Cathedral, Fort Worth. Bob Nichols. I called, I called Pastor Bob Nichols. So sorry I forgot your name, sir. Like, man, forgetting his name around here is like forgetting Don Corleone's name. <laughs> He's a great man of God, and I do not mean any disrespect whatsoever. That's what I told him. He and I, uh, we had the two radio slots together on uh, 91.3 FM, and they were going to move me to the 12 o'clock slot. He's been the 12 o'clock guy for forever. And he called me, and he said, Troy... He goes, man, I've had this slot for 30-something years, man, and they tell me that they're giving it to you. And I said, sir, it'll be a cold day in hell before I steal your slot from you. I said, for me to steal from you, it would be like me stealing pizza from Don Corleone. I am not going to do that whatsoever, sir. I said, you have nothing, I have nothing but great respect for you. And then I told him, I said, sir, I don't know if you remember me or not, but you let me use your parking lot for me to park 28 truckloads of food in and he said, man, I do remember that. And they, he didn't know me from Adam, and he allowed me to actually do that. So we did a big citywide thing. We, we called every church for an entire year. Uh, we m got everybody together. We did this amazing thing. And there were so many salvations. There were so many miracles. The Lord did so many great things. I'm so grateful. I'm so grateful for Pat Robertson. There's a bunch of others, too, that, that I want to tell you about, but I, I just got to cut to the chase because I just have just a few minutes left. And the significance of big things happening this year, there's no way that we can talk about big things without talking about the horror of October the 7th. We have to talk about hate crimes and murders against Christians and Jews this year has just gone through the roof in such a huge way, and I'm so aware of it. October 7th attack of Muslims slaughtering, raping, and kidnapping of more than 1,200 Jews in their homes on the streets as you, at a young people's dance festival. Um, but the unexpected support of Hamas among our American citizens has really been something for me to see. We always knew that our universities hated us. We knew that. We've known that over the past 20 years. And like, man, they've really turned against us. But they came out this year. They came out and said, man, we, we want you dead. We want you all dead. And we're not going to call that hate speech. We're going to call it free speech. And if you speak against it, we're going to call that hate speech. And we have a government now that will back us up. We saw that happen this year in such an incredible way. And I want to tell you, do not fear, friends. Amen. Do not, do not fear. I want to give you, I want to unpack, I want to unpack for you a little bit of a timeline. You know, and again, this is part of the weirdo numbers thing, but I love this. From, from the fall of Adam to Abraham is 1,948 years. 1,948 years. Everybody say 1948. 
Okay, that was when that was when Abraham was born. Then from Jesus until the refounding of the rebirth of Israel as a nation was 1948 years. Everybody say 1948. Okay, are you tracking with me? Okay, so God made a covenant with Abraham concerning the nation of Israel. And then exactly like that, 1948 years according to a Gregorian calendar that the entire world uses, God kept his promise with the birth of the nation and he matched it with Abraham. Okay, now, when Abraham was 75 years old, he was living in a place called Ur. His daddy, according to tradition and according to extra biblical books, was a priest, a high priest of another God and God Almighty spoke to Abraham and said, get you out of your father's house into a land that I will show you. You will not live here anymore. And he didn't even say who he was and he didn't even say where he was going. He just put it within his spirit. I'm going wherever the Lord tells me to go into the land that God tells me to go. Well, this year, are you ready? Is the 75th year of Israel. And Jews all over the world, including the United States of America, are saying, I'm not protected in this land anymore. I'm not safe in France. I'm not safe in Britain. I'm not safe in New York. And this 75th year of Israel is exactly the same as what was going on with Abraham. They're coming out of the lands and going back to the land, the God, the, 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 the land that is in a covenant with the God of Abraham. Why? Because that's the place where Jesus is coming back. Jesus is coming back soon, y'all. I also remember the Scruggs family, and the Scruggs family are the pastors of Covenant Presbyterian Church in Nashville, Tennessee, that was attacked this last year by a Christian hater. And she went into that place and she murdered a whole bunch of people, including three nine-year-old children. And Haley Scruggs is the daughter of the pastor, Chad Scruggs. And they never imagined that they lived in the United States in such a way that there would be a narrative that is so vile and so hateful that you can count on these jokers to come into your schools and to try and murder you. And it happened. I want to tell you, I watched them this year and what great people of God they have been to stand in the midst of such terror and to stand in the midst of a day that is so hard. And I thought of them on Christmas Day and went, I never met that man one time. And this is the very first uh, Christmas that they're going to have to go through without their nine-year-old daughter. And I just went, King Jesus. And I prayed for them. I would encourage everybody that's watching right now in this room and all over the world, remember to pray for a prophetic name, Covenant Presbyterian Church because that's what those jokers are always after. Amen? What's the sign of the covenant in the Bible with Noah? A rainbow. That's exactly right. Oh, it's a hatred, a hatred for your covenant with, with God Almighty. You know the devil hates your covenant. You know he does, right? Here's what I wanna tell you, do not be afraid. These are the kinds of things, do you guys remember the verse Psalms 123, verse 1, 2, and 3, and the last part of it was, have mercy on us, have mercy on us, because they have dealt us much contempt. We have endured much contempt. This is a day of great contempt for godly people. And here's what I want to tell you. You're still standing. You're still here. You're still here. You're going to be standing at the end of this next year, correct? You're still gonna be in love with King Jesus at the end of this next year, right? I wanna tell you, the Lord did not leave us without a testimony. The very first week of this last year, the very first week, Damar Hamlin, famous football player, dropped dead as untold numbers of people all over the planet Earth, healthy people did. Just dropped dead. They call it now, died suddenly. Isn't it not amazing how we have just accepted that? Isn't that something, how that we as a people have just accepted that? 
Oh my gosh. Well, he dropped dead. He's out there running around. Boom, heart failure, as all professional athletes have in the prime of their life. And here, but here's something, while well, that was not unusual because we saw that so many times this year, let me tell you what was unusual. Instead of protesting America, they dropped a knee in humility before King Jesus. They dropped a knee in great humility towards King Jesus. And when everybody stopped their games, they gathered together and humbled themselves before Almighty God and they cried out, boom, resurrection power came into that man. And it's like, even, even on woke networks, everybody's like, stupid, just stop. We, it, do you know how to pray? I know how to pray. I want to pray for him right now. Let's pray. The same people that are like, no, you can't pray. No, you can't pray. No, you can't pray. For some reason, there was a grace on America in that moment where it just made sense for people to drop to their knee, stop their silly games, and cry out to King Jesus. That's a great testimony. It happened the first week of this last year. I haven't forgot that. I would say I saw some great miracles happen this year. Whenever we, one of my favorite things that happen, and there's so many favorite things, but the rise of attention of sexual trafficking and the release of the movie Sound of Freedom and its world of impact <laughs> is something that I want to just tell you, it is so, it was, guys, it's huge. It is so huge. For those of us that have been rescuing kids for years and years and years, to see all of a sudden good people in the rest of the world go, oh my gosh, I see that. I see that now. That was a great move of God, and I'm grateful for the Lord for that, right? The new Redemption Ranch miracle, where we bought a brand new Redemption Ranch on the border of Guatemala, and our very first rescue girl was Nimshi. Come on. And then that's, he, that's a Hebrew word for a name that means rescued. It's crazy. <laughs> I love that little girl. I'm going to be with her again here, here in a couple of weeks. And so grateful for her. That was a tremendous miracle. That's one, of the, that's one of the coolest miracles I've ever seen happen. And if you don't know that story, go back and look up the videos on it because you got to know that. Uh, one of my all-time favorite events that's ever happened in my entire life happened this year, and it was the rescue of Franciella from the cartel. Yep. That little girl. Guys, whenever that, that miracle of her being rescued and again, if you don't know it, I'm not going to tell you right now, but the bottom line is we had to re-rescue her. And we had several of our friends were murdered this year. And that beautiful little girl was captured again. And we've never had to re-rescue a child before. We've never had to do that. Out of more than 10,000 children, we've never had to re-rescue a child. And we had to this year. But the Lord was faithful. Amen. God was faithful. And we got her back. One of, my, one of my most favorite moments ever happened this last year when I was waiting to hear from Pastor Suwanami, knowing that she was there. And she had cooked up this crazy idea, like the crazy girl she is, of, oh my God, we're just going to have a birthday party. And I'm like, okay, that sounds great. And she threw a birthday party and invited the cartel, and they brought her. And then after she, after she had a big Lego party with all the cartel and the cartel kids, at the end of the day, she said, you really ought to give us that little girl back. And they went, okay, and they gave her back. Like, it's crazy. And that, that picture, that picture, um, which I love that picture, that was when she was nonverbal and she became verbal. And God Almighty healed her of, from not being verbal. She literally started talking like Chatty Cathy. But that was the first time we rescued her. And the second time that whenever we rescued her, I got, was upstairs and guys, we were doing podcasts all day and I just get this text from Pastor Swanami and it's a picture of her and that little girl and she just says, I got her. I wish you could have been upstairs with me in the studio when that came through. We all just totally freaked out. I, I just can't tell you how freaked out we were over this and how distraught that we were 
And like, this cannot be the story. I was telling everybody that we had a child that had been stolen from us, but I wasn't telling everybody it was Franciella because the testimony of God giving her voice, the testimony of all that, I'm like, out of all the kids in the world to target, this one child that is so special to me and this one child that where, where we've seen one of the greatest miracles out of all the miracles we've ever seen with kids, the devil came back after her and said, I will take away her voice. I will take away her testimony. And man, God, the Lord was so faithful. And so we've got her now. Nobody's ever going to get her again. So grateful. Isaiah 41, verse 10, fear not, I am with you. Be not dismayed, I am your God. I will strengthen you. Yes, I will uphold you. I will uphold you with my righteous hand. I held on to that scripture during this whole time. I, there's not been very many times in my entire walk with King Jesus that I have wanted to just get, to just be dismayed. Do you know what I mean by that? Like, okay, I have no grid for this and I'm just gonna just freak out. This, the abduction of that little girl was very difficult for us. And I was like, I will not be able to hold it together knowing that those monsters have her again. How can I, what am I supposed to do? Just get up and just preach in front of everybody and I'm supposed to write podcasts and I'm supposed to, what am I supposed to, I'm supposed to be on other people's TV shows when those monsters have her and I love that little girl so much, it's tough. And I want to tell you, I think that the Lord rescued that little girl, not just for her, but I think he rescued her for me. And I, I just recognize King Jesus and I just say, thank you, Lord. Because I honestly don't know how I, could, how I would have lived with that. We've had really bad things happen to some of our kids. We've had children die and we've had all kinds of things happen. But that, for that little girl to be re-abducted on our watch from one of our homes, our friends murdered, I was like, no. I remember I called Patricia King and she prophesied to me. I started calling, you guys, you guys gotta know how to do this. You gotta call your big guns. And just go, I don't trust myself right now, and I don't know what to think about this. I called Patricia King, and I said, Patricia, I need to tell you what happened. And I told her, and she's like, oh no. And I was like, I know. And I was like, I, I have no words. I have pictures of my friends, and their heads are missing. I, and, and my little girl is gone, and I have no words. I, have, I don't know what to do but just to cry. And she's like, oh, Troy. And she started crying with me. And she's just like, let's get in the Holy Spirit, and let's prophesy what's going to happen. Man, I so needed somebody like that. And so we did. And I want to tell you, she prayed for me, and she prophesied, and she started laughing in the midst of this like really intense moment and like, okay, uh, yeah, right on. And uh, she started laughing and then I started laughing and she's like, you know how this is gonna go. You're gonna get that little girl back and she's gonna be healed and the Lord is gonna bless her and help her. And I really feel sorry for her captors because the eye of the Lord is upon her right now. And I'm like, yeah. Yeah, that's right on. And then that week, I was invited to speak to Congress up on behalf of kids being trafficked all over the world. I predicted the storm, exactly right. I said, there is a storm coming to Washington, D.C. for you hacks that are allowing this to happen. And then a storm hit Washington, D.C. that night and cut all the power off to all Washington, D.C. Well, God gave us a voice to our own Congress this last year. And just the goodness of God is so good. He's just, he's just so good. Now, I can tell you this, if you're wondering why we had dedicated so much time and, and money and our resources of our church and diverted it to Israel during this time of crisis, because for a couple of weeks, I went through the horror of having one of your children abducted. And, and there's still a hundred hostages 
that are still in Gaza's hands. And we have to stand with Israel. We have to stand with them and tell them not everybody in the world hates you. Amen. I'm going to finish up here, and I want to finish up by asking Leanna to come up here. Guys, let's give Pastor Leanna a great big hand clap. Come up here, sweetie. Ask all the guys in a band to come on up here. Wow. Did you hear me tell everybody all you wanted to do was kiss me? I heard you. <laughs> so true. You're supposed to keep our secrets. I can't. It's just so awesome. You know what? You're a lot. I know. <laughs> Thank you. You're welcome. Yes. <laughs> Careful what you ask for. <laughs> you ask for a lot, you get a lot. <laughs> Hallelujah. You guys, you, get, you guys stand up. Everybody stand up if you would. It's time for us to finish. It's been a good day, hasn't it? It's been a good year. It has been a good year. It's been a hard year, but it's been a good year. Where did you get those snake shoes? You know what? This, this, I am going to step on his head. Yeah, I know. That's what I'm doing. Yes. I know. Yes. I got them in my happy Those place in California. Were made for, yeah, I know yes. where you got it. That was, so here, this is what she said when she went in and bought those shoes. She I said, thank you. <laughs> I, she came out and I said, did you buy shoes? I asked her, I said, I said, what have you been doing? She said, I've been supporting Israel. And I said, how did you support Israel? She said, the lady I just bought shoes from was Jewish. She was. That is not supporting Israel. Uh, Yes, that is, is you spending my money. That's what that is. Well, that yeah. we both thanked you. She thanked you too. She did. So, she came out yes. and thanked me. She did. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yep. So what are we doing right now? We are blessing everybody as they leave this year and we're not enter the next fearful, year. Are we? No, no. It's... And we're going to empty ourselves of all fear. Absolutely. And let me tell you what: perfect love displaces fear. Yes. Knowing that God loves you and reaffirming your love for the Lord just throws fear right out the window. Yes. It sure does. We're also not going to enter into this year by holding on to any form of unforgiveness. No. You know, the scripture tells us that we can't be forgiven if we don't forgive. And what keeps us from not forgiving is pride. And pride always comes before a fall. It's not worth hanging on to. We've got to fall on our knees just like all of the world did when that football player died and say, King Jesus. You are king, you are Lord. And we, when we get up, we can't forget that we fell on our knees and said, you are king, you are Lord. He is our king of kings. He is our Lord of lords. And there is nothing that someone has done to you or that you have done to someone else that can't be forgiven. If we still have breath in us, we have that choice. And God has given us that power. It's a supernatural power that the devil wants to take away from you. And we gladly give it to him. We so willingly say, here, have our peace, have our family, have our victory, have our, our everything, because we want to hang on to this unforgiveness and make it an idol in our life. And the Lord says, if you'll just give it to me, there's so much power that's going to come to you. Power to overcome the world is given to us if we can just humble ourselves before the Lord and say, God, forgive us as we forgive others. And so this year, before you leave this year, forgive. 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 It doesn't mean it didn't happen. Forgive. It's a choice. It's a choice that we get to make, and God gives us the power and the ability to do it. We need to be forgiven, just like the person that need, you need to forgive. We need to be forgiven. And know this, they don't owe you anything. Once you forgive them, you, they don't owe you anything. And they also don't control your mind and your heart and your emotions anymore either. You're taking that power away from the enemy. It's yours. Let's pray. Yeah, thank you, Jesus. I love you, King Lord. Jesus, we love you, Lord. I love you, God. Praise you. Thank you, Jesus. I just, 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 I just declare the I'm presence of the Holy all, Spirit Lord. in this room that removes hurt and removes yes. fear as we say yes Thank to forgiveness you, and yes. boldness and faith and hope and love as we present we our hearts trust. to King Jesus and we say, I will look to your throne. Yes. I will look to your throne. I am so dependent upon you, Lord. 
And God, you will look at my look and you will respond with mercy. Mercy to forgive, mercy to have faith, mercy to have hope, the love of God. Thank you, Jesus. Jesus, we Holy need you, Spirit, Lord. Fall on us, Lord. Jesus, we need you so Break bad. Us, Lord God. Let your Remove presence be here heart, in such Lord. a great way. I love you, God. You're so good. Leanna, pray for us, sweetie. Lord God, we give you our all, Lord God. Everything that we are, Lord God. Everything that we hope for, Lord God. Every hurt, every victory, every pain, every disappointment, Lord God. We give it all to you, King Jesus, at the altar. And we sacrifice it, Lord God, to you. And we say it doesn't belong to us anymore, Lord God. We've given it to you. And we take up, Lord God, the anointing, Lord God, the breakthrough anointing, God, that you have for us in this 2023, this 2024, Lord God. We go on, Lord God, and we say yes to your commandments, Lord God, that we were going to forgive one another, Lord God, as we have been forgiven. And God, those who have been forgiven much, love much, Lord. May we be lovers this year of your kingdom, of your heart, Lord God, of your will and your way, Lord God. May they know us by the way we love each other, Lord. I pray, God, that there would be a revival, Lord God, of your love poured out on this nation, Lord God, the nations of this world, Lord God, that are crying out to you, Lord God, for justice, for peace, for hope, Lord God that your church will rise up, Lord God, and there would be a different spirit, Lord God, within this world, Lord God. And I thank you, Father, for the great harvest, Lord God, of this end time. I thank you for allowing us, Lord God, the victory, Lord God, to overcome all that has owned us in this year, Lord God, that we now own those fields, Lord God, and that we, Lord God, are are faithful to be good stewards of, of the victories, God, that you've given us. God, I call our families blessed, Lord God. I call our our memories blessed, Lord God, our finances, Lord God, our hopes, our dreams, Lord God, our relationships, Lord God. I call those things blessed, Lord God. We speak in faith, Lord God, maybe not seeing it, but Lord God, believing it, Lord God. And we thank you for it in Jesus' name. Amen. Guys, just, just stay in this holy moment for just a second, because I feel this from the Lord. Is there anybody here? actually in this room here today and you go today you say today is a day I have to receive Jesus and I'm giving my heart to King Jesus right here right now I want you to raise your hand let me see you Amen. see you brother see you sister I see you see you brother see you hallelujah I want you guys listen you're gonna go into this new year different and this next year is gonna be different for you You do belong to the Lord, and He loves you. So I want everybody here, guys, to pray this prayer with me. Are y'all ready? Yes. Say, King Jesus. King Jesus. I give you my heart. I give you my heart. All of my heart. All of my heart. I belong to you. I belong to you. You belong to me. You belong to me. Fill me up. Fill me up. With your Holy Spirit. With your Holy Spirit. I want to know you. I want to know you. Forever and ever and ever. Forever and ever and ever. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Name. Amen. Amen. Guys, let's give the Lord a great big praise. He's so good. How are you? Listen, if you if you just prayed that prayer, let us let us please pray for you. Would you please come forward and let us pray for you? Also, if you need a healing within your life, let us pray for you. Come forward and allow us to minister to you and to your family. If you got through these holidays and it was rough and you need us to pray for you, let us pray for you. For all my friends that are watching all over the world and you can't be here with us today, call our prayer line. It's people that are in this room. And guys, we prayed with thousands and thousands, tens of thousands of people last year. And we'll also be in prayer for you. The number's on the screen. Guys, I love y'all so much. I call y'all the head and not the tail, above and not beneath, and highly favored of the Lord.